Well, as Lugansk finally receives much needed aid, at least five residents have been killed in army shelling. We warn you there are some graphic images coming up. Now, locals say such scenes are frequent. Less than half of the 500,000 people who used to live in Lugansk remain there, and it's mainly the elderly. No place in the city is safe as bombs land on residential areas every day. Now, the U.S. says the convoy entering Ukraine is a violation of the nation's sovereignty and has warned Russia there could be consequences. The White House has issued a statement calling Russia's humanitarian convoy military without anything to back up its accusation. It also claims that most of the vehicles have only been inspected by Russia. That's despite checks by foreign journalists and the International Red Cross. Kiev also admits the trucks were carrying humanitarian aid. Garnet Chichikan sums up Washington's reaction. The U.S. threatens additional costs and isolation if Russia does not remove its trucks from Ukraine. It's a much-needed humanitarian aid that the trucks are carrying. They've already unloaded the food and water that people in eastern Ukraine are craving at the moment. Not clear what Washington is trying to achieve with these threats against Russia. Would it rather see people not receive the aid? And it's especially striking because in some other parts of the world, the U.S. itself had delivered humanitarian aid, not always authorized by the governments of the states involved. And, oh yes, sometimes the U.S. even labeled its bombing campaigns as humanitarian missions. And here we see the U.S. threatening Russia for delivering bags of potatoes into Ukraine. Kiev called it an invasion. Russia had requested permission from Kiev to accept the aid, but Kiev had been stalling, putting forward one demand after another, clearly unwilling to let the aid go through. Moscow has accused Kiev of placing political interests above humanity. At this point, there's absolutely no information that suggests the convoy contain anything other than humanitarian aid. Russia took Western journalists to inspect the cargo. Correspondents from BBC and others could point at any truck and have it opened for them. But despite Moscow's assurances and steps to make the delivery process transparent, some Western capitals are full of suspicion. UN Security Council's Western members have condemned the Russian aid. The UK called it provocative. Here is how the Russian envoy to the UN responded. Some members of the council were not concerned about the fact that uh, hundreds of civilians are dying. They were not talking about uh, that. Uh, they were not concerned about the humanitarian catastrophe in eastern Ukraine. They were concerned about humanitarian convoy. Germany, on its part, expressed, quote-unquote, deep concern by the fact that the convoy crossed the border without Kiev's permission. But Germany's Angela Merkel also added that regardless of how the aid was delivered, everything should be done to ensure the convoy actually reaches people in need. In Washington, I'm going to check out RT. Well, the Western mainstream media were quick to fan the hysteria of a Russian invasion. Some even went as far as calling the humanitarian convoy a Trojan horse with artillery units. RT spoke to a couple of political analysts about the accusations. When in history has a country invading another country documented from, from beginning to end what its movements are going to be? So for the Ukrainian government and for Western uh, governments and Western media outlets to allege it's an invasion force is preposterous nonsense. But when you think of it from a PR perspective, it makes absolute sense to distort the truth and to paint Russia in a very negative way and to argue that Russia is threatening Ukraine. This is the pinnacle of hypocrisy. Uh, there, it's clear that there is no invasion. It's clear that the convoy is purely humanitarian. And it's clear that the arrival of the convoy has point, uh, underscored to the rest of the world uh, that there is no invasion, that the only people suffering here are the peaceful people in eastern Ukraine, that their own government is trying to murder. And that's a problem. And so they need to divert attention from this to some sort of hypocritical talk of Russian invasion. I doubt there would be a European aid coming into that region. For them, uh, people in Donetsk and Lugansk, they're, they're subhumans. They're, like the Prime Minister Yasenyuk said, they're, they're not considering these people people. They're considering them rebels, aggressors, Russians, whatever. So they're not going to help them, even though uh, by their own rhetoric and by their own values, they should, but I don't expect that to happen at all.